Hey y'all, shalom, shalom, shalom. It's Michael Israel, and you are watching Spiritual Combat. And as you can tell by the title of the show, we are talking about the why of home defense weapons with Brother Gideon. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Shalom. And um, Brother Gideon, I want you to just go ahead and um, talk about just uh the title that we have and what we're going to be talking about today or what you're going to be talking about today. Okay. Um, um, what I'm going to talk about today is answering some of the why, so why we do some of the things we do when it comes to uh, weapons and home defense, because I've been seeing a plague across the, like the internet and then social media and things like that, where people are um, cloning rifles and they're doing this and they're spending all this money on this, this and a third, and then they call it home defense. And, and what I want to do is today just answer the why, some of the reasons why someone would have an assaulter's type of rifle, someone would have a sporterized uh, a race gun, or someone would have a, a weapon that is for specifically home defense, and then possibly get into some of those things of what's best for you in your situation, or even down to maybe even a shotgun. But you got to understand the reason why it is what it is and what's be going behind this. Because a lot of people... What they do is they listen and they hear things that someone else uh, will speak about. And when they talk about, like, let's say so you look on YouTube. So let's use YouTube as an example. Sometimes you'll look at YouTube and you'll see people, right? And they're talking about something. And if you listen enough, you will hear that same thing repeated over and over again throughout the social media, the internet. Right. You know, so is in life. What well, the problem is, is that the people are just repeating information that they, they heard from someone else, but they don't understand why it is what it is or what they haven't done their due diligence to understand or why this is what it is. Why do they use that bus stop? Why do they use this barrel length? Why do they do these things? They don't know that. They're just looking at it and saying, hey, and then all of a sudden they start to um, add in their own things, own, their own conjectures about these different things that they right. think they understand, but you never become the actual subgematic expert behind this situation because and, you don't know nothing about it. And if you could, Gideon, tell him, uh, tell the brothers and sisters out there watching why you could be considered or why I consider you a subject matter expert on this stuff. Tell them about um, your uh, career and your experience with weapons, if you could. Right. Well, most, uh, pretty much in my entire career, I've, I've spent like around uh, uh, in the infantry. All right. I spent infantry and I work with special special forces, special operations, and I work with different units collaborating with SF and going different places and stuff like that. So I have learned a lot of things due to war and then mistakes just to be made and just mm -hmm. basic locker room conversations. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, through all of that and then also actually having time on the range. There's a lot of times where I went from from the, from the I, I sent remember I sent pastor a thing with a. Was the 75th Ranger uh, Ranger Battalion or same uh, Ranger Regiment? When I was with them, I was hanging out with them for a whole um, rotation, and there were things that we did then that I didn't do when I was in 82nd. You know what I mean? And then what we do now, things have changed, tactics have changed, but then it was that thing, and now I can answer the why of why we do such things like combat clear now. Back then, it was all hostage retro type deal. So we all rush into the room, start flooding things, throwing flashbangs. And th that's the, what we did then because that was the tactics then. And there was a reason why we did it then. And things started developing and over time changed. And that's when you started seeing a little bit more different tactics used because people were getting shot to hell. Hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Rushing into the room like that. Yeah. And these guys were sitting there because a lot of them, like when I was uh, when I was doing my mission with them, then we were going after uh, Al Zakari. Hmm. And I'm doing that, messing around with El Zakar and all his guys, man. Those dudes was crazy. So they had a lot of suicide bombers. So one of the biggest threats we had back then was going into those rooms and actually running into a, a suicide bomber because a lot of times we had to go in and then jump on those guys and stop them from actually reaching as they was reaching for their vets. Just some real shit. I'm telling you straight up. They reaching for it. I jump on their goddamn chest and like, yo. You know, did some shit, you know, got in trouble for later on. But, you know what I mean? That's, right. you, gotta, you understand what I'm saying? 
So then it was about getting in that room quickly. You got to get right. in because if somebody detonates, you know, a couple uh, sticks of C4 inside of a, a room like that, yeah, it's going to be a bad day for everyone. Mm. You know what I mean? If you've ever sat out inside and did a, a charge, a wall charge, fence charge, anything like that, donut charge, any type of charge within there being inside, light interior door, out, ex exterior door, metal heavy, any of that, you know that that blast is. Uh, mm. I remember once I did um, uh, a wall charge and it blew my uh, freaking uh, filling out of my mouth. Dang. Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so. There's so we done things, you know. Why mm -hmm. back then we didn't we didn't have like initially nobody was wearing Peltor, <laughs> you know. What I'm saying it was like we was still wearing earplugs, and that's why I can't hardly hear now, you know. Mm -hmm. Why we wear Peltors now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, but but beyond all that, I really want to answer what are we doing? What are we doing? Because I see a lot of people have like pistols, rifles, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. Hey, it looks so cool. <laughs> But why do you have that? Ask yourself, do you, why? You know what I mean? So that's that's pretty much. It. Okay. So there you go, y'all. Now now you know why I consider getting a subject matter expert on this topic. So now we're gonna get into the okay. whys and the who, what's and wins and all that. Okay. So so let's let's talk about uh, home defense. All right. So the situation. There's a couple of things you have to consider. One, you have to consider obviously your surroundings what type of building you live in what do you got what is the backstops and when i say backstops i mean where's that bullet gonna stop where are your angles you know what i mean distance and angles are what we're talking about when we're talking about cqb i call it cqb so people call it cqc whatever we're still talking about the same thing right but the thing is is you've got to understand what your red walls things like that where other people's will be at you know so if you shoot how much over penetration you got what type of rounds you use so that has a lot to do with the barrel length the type of bullet, you see what I'm saying? Those those things all take an effect, you know, because a lot of people are afraid to use, you know, maybe use some type, certain types of ball ammunition because they're worried about over penetration. But a lot of times we're talking about something like a 55 grain bullet, something like that close quarters. When it hits, the bullet just deteriorates. It dumps a lot of energy inside of that 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 person that you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Whereas you might shoot a M855 um, a, a green tip ammunition where it's got a penetrating round that's going to go right through that person. Mm. That was some of the problems we had over there overseas because you're shooting people. When you get up closely, you're going boom, 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 and you're shooting, and those bullets are going through them. So because the, it's, the shroud is coming off, but the penetrator is still going, keep going. You know mm. what I mean? So it was good when we were firing through vehicles and things like that. So that's where you had that penetration. But the bullet, you want something that has terminal energy. You want something that's going to dump its energy into – the target, which was stopping power, it's going to stop them. I mean, obviously, it has a lot to do with where you're going to shoot them at, too. You shoot them in a, in a computer, that, that's it's it, you know what right. I mean? But then also, where are you going to shoot them at? So, you know, you have to know why you're doing what you're doing, okay. and it makes you better. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so we got a couple examples today. Oh, um, I'm going to start off. I'll, I'll explain. I'll go through mine. We got a bunch of rifles up there. We're going to talk about why we have what we have. Okay. So my brother, Umbra, he also has a suppressor on his. So we're going to start from the from the front back. All right. Talk about why do we have this rifle, the way I have this rifle set up. This rifle is set up for like an assaulter type of rifle. Okay. So there's no, there's no answer all rifle that can do everything. But you got rifles that can do a lot of things well. You know what I mean? So why do I do what I do? Because become, coming from the situation where I was in, where I had I was in intense firefights and things like that, well, I wanted to set up the military had set up a rifle long time to go to block two M4. All right. So I pretty much made mine based off of that block two M4. But at the same time, I tailored it to me because I'm the one that's shooting. Like literally, when you when you build a rifle, okay, you want it to be solid. You want it to be dependable. You want it to be accurate because those are the very important things. And if you don't have that when you're building a rifle, then you're not going to have confidence in the rifle that you're. Especially, you know, I've seen so many people go to the range and it's jamming. Okay, mm. you don't want that. Yeah. So let's talk about 
why do I have a suppressor? A lot of people have a suppressor and don't even know why they got it. You know why you got it? Because it looks cool. And you're like, oh, man, I'm going to get this rifle. I'm going to put a suppressor on it. Damn it. This thing is going to be quiet. And you're going to be uh, upset when you find out it's not. <laughs> well, okay, let's answer why. Okay, well, this is more like, think of it, especially on 556, as a sound modulating device. It doesn't necessarily suppress the sound, okay? When we're talking five by six, because a bullet coming out of this 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 barrel is traveling well over mock. I mean, excuse me, uh, the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have that distinctive pop anyway. But there's a lot of things I can do. If I had this off, you can distinctly hear a sound of what an M4 sounds like versus an AK. Well, when you do that, it sounds different. This right here, the way I got mine down, breaks down to about the sound of a 22 uh, rifle. I'm, I don't know what about you got. Uh, you got about 22. No. What? It's a 10.3 barrel, it just take the edge off pretty much. Okay, <laughs> see, there you go. Well, mine, when my farm, it's like if you, you take mine, I fire, it's like firing a 22. Mm. Okay, so it's changing the sound. So basically, think about when I'm inside of a building. Now, I don't have that that reverberating effect, you know what I mean? That thing that's going to go, that's you ever right. going to a rump. If you ever, I had a guy one time when I was doing some um, clearing, he fired a M249 saw right next to my head. Dude, yeah. <laughs> if you ever want, I mean, feel like yeah, dude, it was it was bad. It was like I, I, I mean, because back then our, our TTP then was just the when you went out run out of ammo or you have a jam, just hit the ground, hit take a knee, right? So the guy was standing over you, and and saw gunner was next to me, who was firing in the room, and he just wow, like, thank you. <laughs> Damn, it was bad, man. You know what I mean? So, but you know, something like this would help. You know, so and also, OK, so moving down from that. All right. And then let's go down with that. One of the things you want to have if you having a rifle that's like, you know, let's say your range rifle, you want to have something. You got to think about what type of rifle you got. Is this how you setting up your rifle? Is this rifle going to be like I said, this is a salter rifle. So for a salter, for me personally, as this being my assaulter's rifle, I want to have a flash hiding device on it. OK, now no, this just kind of this is a, a, a show called war comp, but it, it does both things. But what I really want is because obviously we we own the night and we don't want to fire. Raise it up. Mm -hmm. We don't want to we don't want to uh, fire weapons that are flashing all over the place. OK, mm -hmm. so we want something that we can hide the light. OK, so that's what we're doing. We're doing. You want a solid deal. So you see how I got my setup. I got, uh, you know, lasers and all this other stuff because I have night vision. Now, do you need all that? No. <laughs> so let's get rid of this shit. <laughs> we can get back to that later. Let me see um, your rifle. Yes. Okay. So <sighs> Okay. So we got his rifle right here, right? Now, this is... Basic rifle, but it's good. It's solid. He's got a solid barrel on his rifle. And guess what he also has? He also has a flash hiding device because there's a possibility. Let's say everybody talks about shit hits the fan, right? But this is a good home defense weapon. We got a 16-inch barrel. All right, he's firing the right ammunition, usually firing a 55-grain bullet. Right now, typically, when we talk, when my home defense uh, rounds that I'm using, I use either 70-70 grain open tip match or 45 grain of uh, uh, hollow point. Now, the reason why I use it is because we have found why the 77 grain is just about any distance. It dumps all its energy into the target immediately. Okay. It has very good terminal ballistics. So with a 45 grain, say somebody has a pistol. If you're firing a pistol as a short barrel, kind of SBR type of deal, you want to have something that has a what? 45 grain bullet or something like that because he, the, the the 556 bullet needs to catch up to speed to be able to do the lethal lethality that it's supposed to do. It's not going to do that with a little shorty rifle. So if I build a shorty rifle, yeah, okay, it might be good for home defense. But at the same time, when you shoot that thing inside, it's going to blind you and you're going to go deaf. Mm. So that's mm. what the suppressor for. So my personal home defense weapon, I'm going to say this right now, is the 300 blackout. Now. Now, this is totally my opinion, because I believe personally, and I've done some some tests on this, and I was working with my brother Brent Crago, 
Right. <laughs> we we designed some three hundred blackout bullets and it just hmm. baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the deer with it. Oh God, those things are great. So, but and I can imagine what they can do to a human being. You know what I'm saying? So why am I using? I'm using subsonic round with mm. X-Tac. Okay. So now all of a sudden, when I fire it, all you hear with using a suppressor at nighttime, I got a light on my rifle. You should have a light on your. Everybody should have a light on your rifle. I know I'm talking fast. Keep up with me. So I have a light on my rifle, and it's a little pistol. It's an eight-inch barrel. Why? Because the ballistics on that, the 300 blackout, the powder's going to burn out at eight inches. So I'm getting pretty much all the oomph I need to get out of that bad boy. And then I just simply put this can on, this same can. I just take it off and put it on the other one. See what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden, all I'm going to hear when I shoot is the action and the, and, and, the, and the light is going to be minimal. And that person's going to be down. So think about it. And you get up in the night and you hear bump in the night. What you going to go for? Are you going to go for your pistol, your rifle, shotgun, whatever? But whatever you do, you've got to consider a reason why you have it. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when, I, when he's got something like this, he can use this for his range gun, defense. You know what I mean? Some people call these truck guns. In that case, it would be a little bit hard to get in and out of a vehicle. But that's something that he doesn't have to do because he lives on a farm. So since he lives on a farm, he doesn't have to worry about that. But at the same time, so this time, it would be a great home defense weapon because you're defending your terrain and your home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of considerations that we have to think about when we when we have these. Um, pistols, pistol calibers. Um, pistols are good. But the problem, one of the biggest issues a lot is I see at the range, especially when I'm, I'm been, I've been training people for shit, 20 years um, and really gotten into it in the last, uh, I'd probably say the last 11 years of my career when I was you know, being an instructor, I was doing the fit mission with special forces. So one of the biggest issues is people don't practice enough with these. So like I talk about, I tell people all the time, you know, I, I think I mentioned it when we was up there and uh brother Kabir, lessons brother, brother Kabir, you know, um, about, you know, how people can get all panicky, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then when you start getting all panicky, things start happening and you start making a series of bad decisions mm -hmm. because once, you know, you start, the cortisol levels start pumping up inside of your head, your hands start shaking and all of a sudden, now you got to make a shot. And you all tensed up and you never went to the range to, to hardly shoot. So now you got to shoot in the middle of the night. You got no light on your weapon. You're trying to fire something under stress and expecting you're going to hit something. And you got, you're got firing ball ammunition and you're going to be putting holes all through the wall, maybe possibly even hitting other saints or children in mm -hmm. your home because you never practiced with it. It's going to be a hell of a lot easier to use something like this than versus something like this. But mm. either way, you need to bring your ass to the range and get some practice because mm -hmm. it's important. See you know what I'm saying? And then even with the setups of these, do you have night sights? What am I talking about? Tritium sights on your thing? Because when I did uh, a pistol competition, I just did pistol competition, which I won a couple times. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. But anyways, um, so when I was doing the competitions, one of the quickest things I learned real quick out there, you know, that's the quickest things I've learned quick. One of the things I learned very fast out there was to have night sights and a flashlight because I went out there with a 45, right? I'm thinking, I mean, I got my 45, you know what I'm saying? 1911, baby, I'm going out there. You know, I'm thinking I'm Delta Force. <laughs> and um, my, I had, uh, I was firing a weapon and my primary went down. It jammed up. Mm. The magazine uh, uh, double fed. So I had to transition. So I transitioned and I'm shooting at a target, right? And, and here it is. How they had it set up? They had it set up. Well, the, it was like two Ipsic targets, and he had a, a, a basically a, um, a hostage situation where he's like kind of peeking his head around. And I had to hit that target from I think it was like uh, 15 yards away, and I hit it, but I could barely see it. And one of the things I noticed real quick is I couldn't see my sights. Hmm. So all you people running around with no night sights, that's a problem. How many y'all actually fire at night? Answer that question. Have anybody, how many of y'all actually do night fire? You've not done it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But when does the bad guys come? At night. Oh, shit. Then why you ain't set up for night? So here it is. 
you got a situation where you got an eighty percent probability that um the enemy will be coming at you at nighttime, mm -hmm. and you one hundred percent not set up. That's 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 some weird odds, right? Yeah. Here it is over an eighty percent chance that you're gonna get hit at night, but you one hundred percent ain't ready for it mm. because you don't have your weapon set up the proper way. So there's some oh well, I got a budget issue. Is it a budget issue just to go ahead and get a little Harbor Freight? <laughs> Brothers been, I, hey man, living in the community, we didn't have to learn how to be on the budget. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so, like all that surefire shit that I used to get, well, I ain't not no more. Mm. Harbor Freight, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going for the deals on Amazon this and Amazon that because sometimes I look on Amazon and I can find things that's just as good. Mm. You know what I mean? So. So if you if you have a budget, just just look at the reviews, ask questions and things like do your due diligence. Mm. OK, because everybody gets caught up in this. Oh, it's got to be all oh, this many lumens and this many candela. OK, so if you got lumens, it's, it's brightening up the room. But then at the same time, when you talk about distance, that's talking about candela. So how far do you see that beam? You know how. So what mm -hmm. do you got? But what's going to help you? Do you just need something to open up and see the spectrum of what's going on in your room so you can make make your shot? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you have that? So if you're going to get a weapon, get it set up so when the enemy's going to come to you. Because like Pastor always said, you never know. But we know 80% of the time, a lot of the time, they come at night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why aren't you set up? Okay? Good. Good you see what I'm saying? Good point. I'm moving on. So give me another rifle. We'll just start talking about people's rifles. I don't give a shit. Just hand me one. Okay. All right. So, oh shit, we got the the recce, right? So this is a this is a very new term, right? I I I was in reconnaissance for years, and I I've never used a recce rifle. I didn't even know what that meant until recently. Now we have recce rifles. Well, I know a lot of people might try to try to antiquate a part, put it in the category of a a special purpose rifle, it's like a Mark Twelve is a, a freaking recce rifle, but. I'm going to just say from my experience in the Army, we didn't have no such thing that I know of. It was just whatever rifle you had in there and you was doing reconnaissance with it. Sure. Okay. So <clears throat> he's got a lot of people are using these low, po low power variable optics. Sure. They're great. But you got to get the right ones. That's going to work for you because you got some of them that, 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 are, that are good close up, but get a little hazy far away. You know what I'm saying? So, but what are you going to be using for? So he's got a four power and he got six and an eight. So he chose a four power because up close from that zero to 25 range where he's going to be hitting targets at, it's very clear. And he's got a wide uh, view. So when he pulls up, when he pulls up, it goes right to his eye, snaps right in. Short on for me. But you know what I'm saying? It just goes right in there. You see that? Mm-hmm. Don't point it out, by the way. I'm not. <laughs> this freaking guy. <laughs> <I, you know? laughs> uh, yeah. All hits apply. <laughs> I know, but you know what I'm saying. So going through this. So we look at his. He's got a. He's got an IR laser on here, and it's uh. It's, this is visible and IR, right? So he's got both. Do you have night vision goggles? He does. So he has night vision goggles, so he has an IR. So it's not necessary for you to get it because it looks cool. What's this? This is an IR light. So he can switch this over and it go from uh, regular light to IR light. Mm. So he can see because he's got night vision goggles and obviously he's got some of the same things set up. So it's a good setup. Real good setup. And then also he does a lot of uh, uh, reconnaissance or ranging or patrolling or something like that. So he's got his wife rifle camouflage to break up the pattern a little bit, you know, things like that. It's a good thing. Here you go. Give me another one. I know there's got to be some questions online. People got yeah, if y'all have any questions, go ahead and put them in there. And, uh, you know, you know, what I do, I'll go back and cover. Oh, I remember this rifle very well. This is hammer, hammer, it was a hammer time. Which one? Warhammer. Warhammer. <laughs> Warhammer. 
why I helped put this one together. And God damn, boy, this about broke my back trying to put this thing together. <laughs> but when we did finally get together, this thing is a tack driver, man. And when I say tack driver, it is a very accurate rifle. And what we call in the military bomb proof, this is a bomb proof rifle. So you see a lot of the guys I can with, they have guys rails. You know what I mean? They got, you know, and another thing out there is another thing. Okay. When you're looking for a rifle, go for a Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Molly Chrome Line Barrel. Mm. Okay? Those things. Remember those things. You're going to see a lot of stuff out there. It's going to be nitrite this and this. Okay, listen. All right. Okay, listen. This works very well. And there's a good reason why they do it. Okay, the other stuff, it does work, but it hasn't been tested as much. And we, it, it, you're going to hear all kinds of people talk about, well, the chrome line, this, that. Listen, man, none of you guys is in Ranger Battalion. You ain't in SEALs. You ain't no Delta Force. You ain't going to be firing 50,000 rounds to wear out the chrome lining in these things, okay? So don't even worry about that. But what you do want is something that's going to be able to be passed on, okay? So when I build a rifle, I want to make sure this rifle, like when my children come behind me, Hey, you can get grandpa's rifle right there. It's still going to be shooting good. You know what I mean? And it's still going to do what they need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you want something like that. And here we go right here. It's got a, what's this, a streamlight? Mm -hmm. A streamlight. It, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. It's a it's a, a, a a cheaper light. It's not a sure fire light, but how many lumens in this bad boy? Probably about thousand. a thousand Dang. lumens. How much it costs you? hundred dollars. Nice. And we got some cheaper than that. That one I got... That that one I got fifteen hundred lumens from my Harbor Freight. Guess how <laughs> much it cost me? Fifty nine dollars. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it, we can we can get it done. Uh, optics. He's got a uh, AC, ACSS reticle from Primary Arms on here. Very good reticle. It didn't cost that much. Doesn't cost that much. It's uh bomb proof. You know what I mean? Uh, it's got a little battery in it. I think it probably lasts up to tw what 20,000. 20, uh, uh, um, hours of, of you just kept it kept it on at I think maybe a three power, but it's also etched. So I'm saying so. But is this the best uh, home defense rifle? Yeah, maybe depending. You know what I mean? You still got to be able to remember in the middle of the night. He's got to cut this thing on to be able to see. But at the same time, he's got a light, so he can flash the light and he still can see through his reticle. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? There's something going on there. You got something. It's a good thing. Here you go. <laughs> Let me go to um, what's this? Umbreeze rifle. Let me see that. That's a good one. He's got a good setup. He got a he uh, Umbreeze got his setup. Looks like a, a, a salter type of right. Yeah. He's got his in more of a salter configuration. Okay, so this is what. Oh yeah, jeez. Oh. Uh, huh? <laughs> okay, so he's got a lot going on here. What's what's what size barrel is this? Ten three. A 10-3. Okay, so he's got more of a Mark 18. Now, I'm about to talk some shit, so don't get mad, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about these because I've been seeing a spree of these coming through. A lot of people are doing this, okay? So these rifles, the especially the, the Mark 18s, were mostly for, like, the SOCOM guys, like, uh, and they did a lot of clearing with these. Because I think what it was is they want they wanted to have a rifle that can fit through doorways like this if you didn't have all this shit on, you know what I mean? Go through, especially the seals. Because a lot of the the, uh, the things that the seals had to do, they had to work in really confined spaces and stuff like that. So obviously they wouldn't want to carry around a big 16 inch thing like that, you know? So it works best for them. Um, but there's there's goods and bads about this. Now this he's got a Daniel Defense, so hey. Hey, good, good for you. But there's other ones out there that don't cost this much too. That you can get BCM. They got good. They got good ones. Or just build it your damn self. You get what I'm saying? So there's other ones. I I do a lot of BCM parts and stuff like that. So when I'm sourcing, trying to get sourcing for parts stuff, I go uh, through uh, BCM. Now there's two manufacturers that I know of that that do chrome. Uh, uh excuse me. Uh, Col uh, Cold Hammer Forge. That's uh, Dane's Defense. And um, F and N, okay. So, because the machines cost so much, mm -hmm. okay. So, ask me the question: Why, why, why? There, it's easy because one, <clears throat> Daniel's defense is going to cost you a lot of money, all right. So, I'm going to 
go to uh, the BCM or something like that because I can still get the F&M barrels from them because they, they source a lot of their barrels through F&M. BCM does. And sometimes you can go on uh, another one. Another website is uh, Palmetto State Armory, which you have to look. Palmetto State Armory sells a lot of stuff that's like black nitrate, but there are things. I just recently bought one from my, my beloved younger brother, um, and I got him a, a, a nice PJ. Boy, I love you. <laughs> boy, boy he's going to have a super rifle. Boy, I tell you, man, I got his set up better than mine. Shit, I'm already jealous. I ain't put the shit together. But anyway, he's going to have a super-ass rifle uh, when I'm done with it. Uh, but you have to understand why we got this. This thing right here is good for, like, yes, clearing rooms and stuff like that. And so it could be a real good home defense rifle. But you got to also fire the right ammunition. Back then, they were firing 77 grain open tip match ammo. So that's the type of ammo that you need to source, bro, and put in this weapon or use like something like a 45 grain open uh, hollow point because you can you want to dump all your energy into that target. You understand what I mean? So if you're using some type of ammo that's that's, uh you know, like green tip or something like that, it, bro, you want to get the most out of. It. But then you have a whole nother issue. OK, so I don't know if you've gone to the back 40 and fired and try to hit that 400 meter target. You're going to have a problem. You start shooting at the, the mountain just to have lobbing rounds with something like this. Mm. See, this is one of the big, big, big issues that they had in Afghanistan and other countries, you know, what I mean, with these short ass rifles, because when you start when you go outside, it's one thing hitting a building and being inside. But then when you go outside, what happens then? You get in a firefight. The guy's way down the street. <laughs> Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and your bullets are just, uh, just barely making it. You know what I mean? It just doesn't have that thump behind it. Mm. So a lot you see a lot of SF guys and stuff like that start switching to the 16s and and then the whole, you know, everybody knows about the, the lone survivor, the seals. What were they carrying? They was carrying 18 inch freaking uh uh Mark 12s. You mm. see what I'm saying? Because they wanted to get out and reach out and touch and do that much as damage as possible working in the mm. and stuff like that. So you have to understand. When you got this, do you have something else that will fit for that situation? Now, like I that that lower I have, okay, I had I take that same lower and I built that 300, and I also have 11.5. 11.5 is for that dedicated reason of clearing rooms. So if I had to hit target or something like that, doing I would use that. If I'm inside this home defense, I'm gonna use that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm talking a lot, so you gotta ask me some questions. But this is really nice. I like how it's got it set up. It's got, but you got to understand, we got, LP, you know, uh, a reticle on here. It's going to extend your range, but at the same time, you have to understand the ballistics behind this. The ballistics are not going to match what you got in here. So you'll look at those reticles and you'll see those reticles on there. A lot of people make this mistake. They'll see the reticle and they're like, oh, shit, you know, I got this, this tree, you know what I mean? And they're looking at what you do. That was designed for a 20 inch gun and you got a you got a 10 inch gun. Those ballistics are not going to match up because by the time you're right, your bullet get out there. It just doesn't have the thump behind it. So why did you buy that? Because it looked cool. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? We have to know why we're doing what we're doing so we don't keep making the same mistakes. Mm. All right. And buying all this expensive shit. But it's a nice rifle, though. Here you go. All right, uh, brother Adam asked, Shalom, my brothers, what is, yeah, whoops, sorry about that. What, uh, what is your opinion on stag arms? I have no opinion on stag arms at all. I don't know a lot about that, that manufacturer. Okay. And uh, Pastor Dow said, dang, I wish I got a notification. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of last minute when we was on the road. Like, hey, hey, we're gonna do it. All right, cool, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, but um, well, anyways, blessings to you, Pastor. I love you, love you. And Shalom, I'm, Pastor. Shalom. All right, so uh, go ahead, go ahead, Shannon. What do you think of binary triggers? Binary triggers is a waste of waste of time. So what what is a binary trigger? A binary trigger. A uh, binary trigger is one of those uh, triggers where you got. Well, people want to get an automatic weapon, basically, oh, okay. in a sense, but they're, 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 it's a loophole because according to the ATF, it's pull, trigger, hold, and then they'll fire, you know, or you know, some kind of, where well, they don't want to force reset a type thing. So the binary trigger is basically what they started off from, like, uh, from, um, uh, what's it, uh, the, um, the air, not airsoft, what's the other one? The, um, 
paintball. paintball paintballs and the paintballs is guys that's where the binary trigger started from because those guys would do some number like this and then shoot real quick so they wanted to release the fire off many rounds now the problem is this everything has always been when the types of type of machine guns anything like that dude you got to be able to control it all right i'm gonna tell y'all straight up i'm gonna look right into this camera and tell you straight up i've been to war a lot of times and i very few times went full auto or anything hmm. i like it just uh, my rap my weapon at the time was a burst okay so I think maybe twice, and I think for shits and giggles. Mm. But it just, you're not going to hit anything. Mm. So I'm well, I'm way more effective of just firing one round at a time, giving effective fire. Okay, you want to aim and fire. Okay, that guy's, I'm, I'm shooting for, you know, for this guy. What, uh, possible location of where he's at, you know what I mean? And I'm firing him, bow, bow, bow. I can control that sort of, I'm going, bow, 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 steady, you know what I'm saying? So, mm, yeah, I, I, I really wouldn't go with that. I would actually go with a good trigger. I personally like guys, there's a lot of them, there's a LaRue out there. A, I, I like triggers that is about 3.5 pounds, between that and 4.5, depending on, on the rifle setup that I have. For my Mark 12, it's real light. I got an SSC, SSAE. Um, on trigger on that was extremely light, but mm. I'm firing at six, seven hundred yards away. Mm. So I need something that's going to be a, a real clean, soft break on it. You know what I mean? So I get, you know, initially I might get about three pounds and then that last pull is about a pound. And I need that because I'm firing at distance and I don't want to deviate left or right because it, it adds up. So that's why I have that type of trigger mm. system. And this one, I have a Tricon trigger. I have a Tricon trigger in my own right there. There's another guy. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about uh, a four pound trigger, I think. But it has a very clean, smooth break in it. And I can really get down on it. Like, da, 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 da. I can really fire, boom, 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 and get those <laughs> right right in there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And with the with the multi device that I have on the uh, Shokan War Comp, it helps keep it steady, mm -hmm. keep it very flat. Uh, a lot of uh, competition shooters, they use uh, a heavier type of rifle. So I have a bull barrel on this thing, okay? Now, there's a couple of reasons why I'm using a bull barrel. Uh, so let's, let's uh, I'll talk about this real quick. So a typical barrel, okay? So normally a, a soldier would carry about 210 rounds on them. But let's say you got in a real bad firefight, which happened to some Marines. God rest their souls. Um, their barrels burn up. They mm. burst it. Mm. So round, round about 300 rounds of full automatic fire and real intense fire, you have a tendency these things will burst. Mm. If you put about three to 400 rounds in a rapid fire, they'll burst on you. Mm. Okay? And that's typical most barrels. Okay? And a, a weak point for a lot of them is the gas block. So when you're building these things, make sure you get some good steel ones. I go with BCM a lot. Mm. Um, so if you get a cheaper gas block, because a lot of them are putting out this cheap-ass shit. Mm. You know what I mean? You don't want that. So the barrel that I got, I got a, a Socom barrel in there, okay? And that Socom barrel, I can fire up to nine to nine to a thousand rounds before I have any kind of failures. And tests show that that barrel right there, normally the barrel doesn't fail at all. It's actually the gas block would actually fail before that, but it would still be able to shoot. I just, I have a, a bold action rifle at that moment, you know what I'm saying? But it still could shoot. But that's why I got what I got. Uh, what about, been what, in what like about piston versus gas? Uh, okay, um, so that's that's cool too, and I know a lot of people do that. Some people do that, but you also have to worry about the weight. You know what I mean? You got a lot of weight for it. You know what I mean? Like, okay, here, I got. It. Okay, you got. It. Okay, so, all right, folks, <laughs> this is a this is a pig. Okay, this this is a pig. Okay, and I ain't talking about an M60. This thing that I have right before me with everything, with, when I put it with the suppressor and everything on, you know how much this thing weighs? How much? 14 pounds. Mm. This is a heavy ass rifle. When I strip it with all this other stuff and I'm going fully load, it's 11 pounds. Mm. Okay? So this is a this is a heavy round. Most people's rifles run about, about six pounds empty a little and been about seven, eight pounds maybe with something on it. This, this is a beast. Okay? But I'm willing to carry that weight. Because I remember sitting on the rooftop for a long time, running out of ammo, surrounded by a lot of people that didn't want, you know, Alzacari, 
him, him and his boys, they almost got me that day. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be able to keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> These work. Okay. So, but it's about balance. See, here, don't shoot nobody. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's clear. But the balance, you feel the balance? Yeah. It's heavy, but it's balanced, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I have it balanced. That's key. So I got weight. So a M249, I believe an M249 saw is, uh, I think, 16 pounds. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, this empty weight, uh, M24, and now talking about the airborne version, it's 16 pounds. That damn thing weighs almost that, you know, load, fully loaded. But there's a reason why I do it. I'm willing to do that. You know what I'm saying? So do some push-ups. <laughs> What's we got? All right. Uh, Pastor said, damn, Ranger, speak English to the folks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh sorry. I'm oh, sorry, bro. I'm sorry. All right. All right. There you go, Pastor, up there. All right. Let me uh, – okay, somebody asked, uh, Brother Van said, Brother Gideon, what is a good close quarter red dot for an AR pistol? Um. Well, a lot of people use aim point. A lot of people use aim point. Uh, Vortex makes good ones too. Uh, uh, um, Trigicon, they make a. I personally, I like EOTech. That's something that I like. And the reason why, let's answer some of the why, okay? On EOTech, the reason why I like EOTech personally, this is me, is because that the, the, the apparatus, when you look at it, the circle, you got two circles, right? You got this big circle, right? And then you got a little dot in the center. I usually go with the ones that has two dots, okay? That's an XP2. I usually go with that one because I use that for ranging, okay? So when I look at the, the big circle on the, on the EOTech, if you ever look, it's called a bullseye type circle. That big one right there, it's like a 62 uh, MOA circle. That one right there. If you put a human being between that, between the top of that circle and the bottom, that's typically 100 yards, okay? And then you got the dot in the center. So when you put the person's head to the feet of the big circle, that's 200 yards. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the two dot one because the two dot one gives me a little bit more uh, options. Reference. So now I got two dots at the bottom inside this big circle. And then obviously if I go to the bottom dot and put them down to the, that's 300. Mm -hmm. If they fit between the two dots, that's 400. Mm -hmm. If they fit about the one size dot, any one of those dots, it's about five and above. Mm. So when I need to hit a guy at 400 yards, I just simply I aim, I look, and I see who he can fit in between those two. And then I just pretty much aim and pull the trigger, and I hit bing, bing, bing all the time. Mm. And I usually got a set for about a 36-yard zero. Okay, So that's pretty much what I'm running with. But that's the reason why I use EOTech, because I like the, the, the view. I don't like to look in this little narrow box. All right, so you can change that by putting putting it forward on your weapon and stuff like that. So we use this pistol. This is a this is one that a lot of people used to use back in the day. Just remember, I'm old school, right? So this is a, a Seymour. I have a Seymour on 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 my my Scorpion, and the reason why is because because obviously of you. I think it's a a three MOA dot on this thing. But remember, I'm shooting stuff real close, mm -hmm. and really the the uh, the maximum effective range on this is about 50 yards. You know what I mean? So so I'm not really trying to kill people way out. Can it go out to 100? Ah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? But it's more effective around up to about 50 yards. So this is what I can use inside. You see what I'm saying? And I'm using something like that. So basically what your eyes can get on and you can see and it was well within your budget, I would suggest going with that. Another company to look at. It's hollow sign. Boy, hollow sun is getting out there. When I when hollow sun first came on the scene, I bought a hollow sun real cheap. I bought a hollow sun originally for I think it was 120 bucks, maybe. Yeah, you ain't gonna find one for that more. They're about two something now, maybe up to three in some mm -hmm. cases. But hollow sun is another one to get into. I like hollow sun. Any mm -hmm. more questions? Yeah, somebody asked, uh, what is are your thoughts on bullpup rifles like a Springfield Army uh, Hellion 5.56? Yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. So bullpups. Bullpups have been around for a long time with the Star Aug. Star Aug almost beat out the M4 a long time ago. When it, when it was testing, the Star Aug almost won the competition. And I think some people say for all the calendar purposes, it did win. 
but it's 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 a kind of thing when it comes to the ergonomics of it. I personally, when I was firing, like I I, I fired the French FAMAS, I was working with the French commandos, and I didn't personally like uh, like the FAMAS that much. One of the issues that I had with the FAMAS, particularly, because I'm only going to talk about a weapon that I know I've shot. Okay, one of the issues I had with that particular bull, bull pop was the fact that every time from when I was holding it, I would hit right here, and they have like the 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 reliever drop the mag, like it was like right here, but I hit it and it would just fall out on me. Mm. You know what I mean, but like balance wise, it felt good. Yeah, you know I mean, it was uh, decently accurate. Um, I think they had a twenty round, twenty five round box magazine. That they were firing out of it. Um, uh, a lot of people like the fact that you can you can ex you got a, a barrel that's a full sixteen inches, but overall length of like maybe twenty six inches of that of that length. So that's good. And I know a lot of people getting a lot of uh, raving reviews about this uh, Springfield, and it's been used in uh, com combat situations for now. I think the Iraqi army is using them. Hmm. Um, I don't really have a big issue with them. I personally don't like the ergonomics of it. I like something where I can just, you know, I'm, I'm going right at it. It's, it's like right here. When I go into my workspace or area that's real close to me where I'm trying to speak English to the folks, I'm trying to be obedient, bring it, bring it, bring it close to, you know what I mean? I can, I can, you know, do all my stuff. I'm, I'm here. You know what mm. I mean? And the bull pups, it's like, I'm like digging under my arm, trying to wash my arms to get some bacteria or something. I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. There's a lot going on. And then, and here's another thing about bull pup. Bull pups have been notoriously known but having terrible triggers. Now, they've gotten better, but to keep that in mind. All right. Um, somebody asked, what would be your suggestion for someone's first rifle? My apologies if you touched on this already. Absolutely. No problem. Okay. So when you say rifle, okay, I'm going to assume you mean like an AR-15 type rifle, 5.56 five, or something like that, or possibly man, an AK. Okay, I would personally suggest an AR system. Reason being because, one, ammo is easy to get to for the most part. You know, we had a little scare there. <laughs> but and um, a lot of people in your around us use the same ammo. So I can ask you for a mag, right, mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. And you got battle rifles which have like a heavier caliber rifle. You know, uh, full power rifle, what they call a 308 caliber type of rifle. And then you got, you know, the, the 556 one. I would probably suggest going with something like that. Uh, and then from there, like I I do a lot of, I buy some rifles. I like to buy like some of the Palmetto State Armory rifles. And then I build up from there. Because a lot, one of the thing is, you got this issue with the mil spec deal. A mil, mil spec just means it's good, good enough for the military to break it down. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a certain thing that they use across the board. But that doesn't limit you to not saying that this is not the best type of rifle. You know what I mean? Because there, there, there are some people out there that make better rifles than, than Colt. You know what I mean? Colt for a long time was having issues to the point where we stopped using Colts. And I remember for the most part, I was using an FN during uh, most of most of the time I was in the military. I used an FN. It wasn't a Colt. I think when I first came in, it was a Colt. And then we switched out to the M4s and uh, A1s. And it, it just it from there it just changed because there was a couple of issues with the pulp Colts, man. Uh, I personally didn't run across an issue with the Colt or actually maybe I did. <laughs> actually, I take that back that night. I got shot. I probably was with, I probably had some bitch. He probably had a coat, but he didn't clean his damn rifle. But anyway, oh yeah, clean your damn rifle. Yeah, now I'll clean your that. damn rifle. <laughs> Shit. Hey, hey. I'm, there, I'm not doing that. Ever. I would never pick up another. I'm telling. That's that's why I. That's why when I'm on y'all asses, that's why. Because I will never, ever, 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 ever pick up another man's rifle. It's really, you got to give me your shit. And then I fire, and then all of a sudden, that shit go click. Because I'm going to tell you, the worst thing that can ever happen to you is when somebody's standing in front of you, and your shit go click. Boy, I'm about boot. shit myself, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was shooting, too. Because then that dumbass couldn't shoot. And I went back and grabbed my damn rifle, M14, which is still a heavy beast. That's another pig, too. And I just killed his ass dead. <laughs> Yo, but hey, clean your shit. You know. All right. Uh, it says uh, somebody said, "What is the minimum length barrel for dual purpose use, i.e., home defense and shooting 300 yards?" Or does it? That's an excellent question. I'm glad you uh, asked that question. Or does it make more sense to get a 16 inch barrel? Okay. 
Good question. All right. So there's an issue, all right, especially here in the United States of America with these proprietary stupid ass laws that they keep passing. And the ATF is trying to take away our rights, our Second Amendment rights. Remember, your shit's being attacked. OK, you also defend your rights. Don't that doesn't mean we go out there and kill people. I'm talking about legally defend your rights. OK, um, but so a lot of pistols. Let me see a pistol real quick. Um, a lot of pistol uh, rifles are, are under attack. Uh, pistols. Yes, your pistol. Yeah, pistol. Pistol. Okay. A lot of these pistol brace rifles or pistol brace pistols are under attack. Okay. So I like options. I've always liked options. Okay. So I have both. I have a pistol, pistol brace. And um, the lowers that I have and I generally get are pistol lowers because according to the law, you can change, you can transform a pistol to a rifle, but you can't make a rifle into a pistol. What does that mean? OK, so basically, if you purchase this rifle, OK, the lower receiver of this rifle, let's just say you went to the store and you decided to uh, have a buy a lower receiver, just bear nothing in it. The manufacturer built that. For to be a rifle, you have to understand the difference unless it says otherwise. OK, so if the manufacturer built that lower receiver as a pistol, then it will be. It is registered to them as a pistol. But if you have a rifle and then I'll say you want to be cool all of a sudden and get a shorter barrel, you're wrong. Don't do that. That's a no, no. So I have a pistol lower. I'm going to show you an example. It take your rifle back. So this is a pistol lower, okay? This is a pistol lower that I turn into a rifle, right? By just simply adding these parts. Now, I can change it back and still be legal by making it a shorter barrel and then putting my, my pistol brace back on it because originally when I bought this from the manufacturer, the lower, the spike sackler, it was designed as a pistol. Mm. You understand? So don't try to get slick and then try to do something else, all right? Be within your rights and know your rights, especially within each one of y'all states. So go ahead and call your sheriff's departments and make sure that you do the right thing. Okay, because we don't want, especially when we go out uh, and we ha we we're all gathered together. Please don't listen, man. Understand the rights of your state and the state that you're going to. We all going to Tennessee and stuff like that. Understand if it's a a, a, a reciprocity state or whatever bringing that type of weapon into that state and know that you're not bringing the SPR, SBR into, into the land because all you're doing is polluting the land with bringing that bullshit because you're just giving those people a damn excuse to try to come on the land to get your stupid ass and start prying into everybody else's shit when you know the enemy's out there trying to stop us from celebrating our feasts and, and, and obeying y'all's commandments. So don't do it. Don't be stupid. And that's why I want to tell y'all, you have to understand why you're doing what you're doing. OK, that, I don't know. I don't think I answered that question yet. I would I would probably suggest a 16. The reason why I would suggest a 16, because you just have a rifle just right off the bat. OK, it's not an attack. But if you do decide to go with a pistol, I would I personally would tell you this. If you're using a 5.56 to go with 11.5 or 12 inch. OK, that's what I would suggest to you, because the ballistics back me. OK, the ballistics on it. Back me on that because the shortest you want to go is 10-3. But when it comes ballistically, you're going to get a lot more better out of 11-5. And I know it doesn't sound like much, but that much more um, does help downrange. OK, but I would highly suggest that you go ahead and get a 16 because it wasn't a building I couldn't get into with that 16. I, I can I can, I cleared many, 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 many buildings with a 16 inch barrel hmm. or well. Technically, it was a 14.5 with a muzzle device on it. But, you know what I mean? So, I'll leave. this is a 14.5, too, with a muzzle device pinned in well. All right. Somebody a, asked, and, and they might have misspelled. I'm not sure. It says, what do you think about Chris Vector? Chris. <laughs> you know I, I know what a Chris is. I'm, okay. I'm just laughing. No, I'm um, <laughs> I wouldn't waste my money on that. I mean, it, okay, so the Chris Vector, if I understand the history, it was made by uh, uh, Blackwater uh, originally, and it was supposed to be something that was going to use for uh, uh, global security. Okay, so um, 
they wanted a weapon that would like you know had the hell everybody knows about the 45 45 well I, I carry a 45 we, we could we could debate about this all but look at that look at that right there you see that right there what's it what's it the camera well that's a big ass bullet you don't want to get hit by that okay you don't want to get hit by that. So the quick specter, a lot of them started off with that 45, but they wanted to make the mechanism so that you can fire that big old slug, you know what I mean, and and get good shots on it. But it's very bulky, and um, you're not getting. I don't for the price and everything. I don't think you're really getting the the, the cluck, the most cluck for your buck. I really wouldn't go with it because I heard a saying. It was a beautiful saying. Um, what was it? Basically, our Rather put two in you than miss one time with a bigger bullet. Hmm. Put, put, yeah, no, it was put. I rather I rather hit you twice with a smaller bullet than miss you once with a big bullet. Hmm. That's the same. And so, so I wouldn't recommend. I I got a scorpion because I got a thirty three round magazine. Well, no, that one's thirty five. I have thirty five rounds in it. Okay, so that gives me a lot of options. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I Y'all got any questions, bro? Huh? Um, what about uh, scopes as far as uh, close to mid to long range? Is yeah, there, is there a yeah right. that's what somebody else asked here. They said, what power and brand scope do you recommend? Okay, <laughs> that really goes back to the shooter, okay? What you have to really look at is glass. Okay, there's a lot of shitty glass out there, okay? Okay, I'm going to tell y'all straight up. A lot of glass that you hear that says Malaysia, that shit come from China. OK, mm -hmm. don't be fooled. Okay? <clears throat> you hear Malaysia, just hear China because Malaysia don't make shit. Pretty much all the ships that come from China go to Malaysia and they just sell it with the Malaysia brand. Mm. OK, so don't be fooled. OK, some of the best glass you can get out there is European glass and you know, like Steiner, stuff like that. That's some good ass glass. OK, um, but uh, there's other things out there that's got what we call the Japanese glass and Japanese glass is very good. And you'll find a lot of Japanese glass and certain uh, products such as uh, um uh, Vortex. Vortex has a lot of Japanese glass. Okay. Night Force has a lot of it. You'll find it in depth. The meaning, when we're talking, we're talking about edge-to-edge -edge clarity. All right, so when you look at it through the glass to the edge, sometimes you you things that can bubble up and look weird, distort it in the edges, and, and how much uh, uh, range of view you have, you know what I mean, between uh, left and right. So when you're looking, you have to understand what do you have it for? Is this something like I have a, a, a weapon system? I have a sniper system. Like my Mark 12 is set up to be a sniper system, pro se, even though I understand that it was for a designated marksman. I was a designated, a designated marksman when I was in the military. So a lot of the targets that I was firing, I was using a, a Mark 14 at the time, but um, I, I never actually used a Mark 12 in combat, but I did have a Mark 14, which is an M14, and uh, uh, basically. It's just a, a M21 and a cut chassis, pretty much. But um, <clears throat> you want to understand why do you have that? Okay, so I have a 10 power <coughs> scope. I think it's like two, uh, 2 2.5 to 10 power uh, night four scope in my Mark 12, and I have it set up because I know that I'm going to fire at targets no more than maybe 600 yards because that's pretty much the maximum effectiveness that I want to get out of my 77 grain bullet. Can it go further? Yeah, absolutely. It'll fire up to a mile. But am I going to be effective of that? No. The bullet's pretty much just going to be, ugh. You know, it's not going to do this. Either. It's not going to have that, 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 that thump I want. So pretty much I'm looking at something I'm looking at between four to 600 yards is where I'm going to get the maximum power out of it because it starts destabilizing around about 750. So understand when you build it and you have a scope behind that system, understand what you're trying to do with it. Now you see he has a, a, a low power variable scope. Okay. Um, so his goes up to four magnification. Now, is he going to be fine in his, his ability? He, that man right there has never fired at a target at 600 yards. So why would he want to have a scope that's good 26 power when he, first of all, his rifle can't do it and he's never practiced doing it. See, a lot of people do that. Their body shit, and it, where you you go to a hundred yard range, and you got this scope that <laughs> you never practice for. What are you doing? It's be, that's why I'm on it. That's why I'm here because I <laughs> don't do that stupid shit. You're not gonna you're not gonna use it. Where are you going? Where where where? Nowhere. Exactly. Most people don't even never use the shit. You know what I'm saying? So if you got from that right there, he's got a four power sig. 
Very good. Very good glass. And guess what? From what he needs to hit up to 300 yards and get and get a, 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 a target ID, a identification of a target, he can do it with that. So he can say, hey, that's friend of foe right there. And then, boom, I can still, he can zoom out and then get him. You know what I mean? And then he'd be within well confines of his maximum effective range of that, 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 that weapon system. So he's good to go, about 500 yards. You see what I'm saying? So that's the consideration of why you want to do it. So you look at all these other people and they looking, there's a lot of shit out there, bro. There's a lot of information, a lot of people trying to do all this cool guy shit. And it's just marketing. Don't get caught up in the marketing, y'all. Don't get caught up in the marketing. These people on YouTube want to sell shit for their channel. They're getting free shit and they're going to keep coming in. And all you're doing is just going out there and rushing to get all this shit. And really, you don't even need it. Why? You Like, I got a Harbor Freight. Look at me. I got a Harbor Freight. It's not Harbor Freight, but it's some cheap ass light. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On oh, my shit. But I tell you what, I'll see you. I'll see you <laughs> with that 1500 Lumens that I can recharge and all the other shit. Now, there's some things I will not compromise on, all right? When it comes to the actual function of the rifle, I ain't getting no cheap shit, all right? Because you don't want to. I got all the best parts inside of my, my rifle. Because when it comes to me fighting you on that day, if I got to fight you, I want to have as much of an advantage as I can. So I'm going to train my ass off, and I'm going to have the best weapon system. Because when I went over there, I wanted to, uh, we, we dominated our enemy. We used knots. We had air power, all these different things to dominate. Never, ever get into a gun, a fair gunfight. Mm. Just don't do yeah, it. I like that. Never get in a fair gunfight. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to be on an equal plane with you. I want to I wanna be able to just devastate you. Okay? So when I come, I want my trigger. I set my trigger up so it can break quick cleanly. I work with my my uh, my, my safety mechanism. I'm not loosening it up, but it's 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 nice. It's a boom. I know where it's at. I practice with it. I know how to snap shoot. I done, done all these things. My, I, I use an EOS head because my eye catches my eye real good. I like that. I practice with it. Some, so whatever distance you are, I know how to range you. I know how to shoot. Bow! Gotcha. <laughs> and, what, and you don't practice. At nighttime, I've done many a times when I've stand out there and then shot at night on the land when it's shot at night. Just go in the middle. Hey, let's go ahead and test this bad boy out. How many times we went out there and just test to see our, our, our brakes? A lot of times we go out to chest. Well, shit, let me see your flash. We stand over here. Let me see what it do. Fire! I didn't see shit. You know, <laughs> you know, because we, we, we're trying to we're trying to work on these weapon systems to make sure that we have the best. So we'll practice. We'll cut the light on and shoot and move. Remember, we're doing the drills when we it was at night. We'll shoot and then all of a sudden you flash a light and then run over there and then then shoot and reengage so to confuse the enemy and also increase your chances of survival and practice. Mm -hmm. You have to practice. I know uh, Frogman talk about all the time with uh, uh, Goshen. They're constantly clearing clearing up there. You have to. Because going back to what Pastor said, you never know the time when that time when them people are going to come to you. You never know. But you have to be ready. Get your shit together. What, what else we got? Yeah, and that that's why Brother Gideon's down here. He helping us get our shit together. Oh, I'm going to dig into y'all shit. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Y'all going to hate me before I'm out <laughs> All right. <laughs> so somebody said, uh, what's the best dual purpose caliber round for home defense and outside battle? Uh, 300 blackout? No. No. I, I, if, for, like I said, like 300 blackout is what I use inside pretty much. Um, now, remember when I was with my brother Brent, we designed some shit. Damn, I got a Magnum round. But that shit down there blows up. It was blowing the primers out of the damn thing. The thing was firing so fast. It had so much power behind them. But, yeah, we, we had to twerk that. But now, like I said, we got to tweak this. Perfect. I would not go with that, though. I would personally, like I said, uh, go with 5.56 because you, you really want to think about supplies. Okay? Think about supplies, y'all. Okay? You have to be able to uh, 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 regain or uh, 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 get get more supplies. So you got three hundred blackout. Who, who, who else got it? Most of, you look at here is nothing but five five six and nine mil. So most of the people in the ministry have what five five six, nine mil. You get what I'm saying? So yep. think about resupply. So when you're talking about resupply, are you going to be able to resupply? Probably not. Uh, is it effective close up? Absolutely. But if you want something, I know what a lot of people are trying to. They're trying to figure out what can you get. 
that's going to work for a lot of situations. I'm going to tell you what you should get. Get you, like I said, an M16 or M4, excuse me, M4, probably about 16 inch barrel. All right. Get you some kind of optic or a red dot. Red dots, something that goes right to your eye. Okay. Preferably something over, you look at a certain range of something between $100, $200 when you're looking at a red dot. Okay. I personally always go with backup iron sights. And when I say backup sights, I'm talking about flip up sights. Okay. Something like this. I got backup sights. Now, if you look at my rifle, I've had, it's my boy right here. We've been together for a long time. This bad boy right here, I love this thing. The reason why I like it is because I had this on when when I when I was a E4 in the military, I had this on my rifle. Okay, and it, it got broken, and I had to they 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 uh DX it and I just kept it and uh I fixed it. But I like it because the way I got my rifle set up with my iron sights, right? So this I got to set up for 36 yards. Okay, so now I fired 36 yards, and that goes out to about 300. But you look right here. See, it says 300. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, now if something, if I remember, I'm looking at my dots. So all of a sudden, I'm looking at my dots and I say, that guy's about 400 yards. All I got to do is 400. And then all of a sudden, I looked at my iron sight, which is co witness to this, and then shoot. He's at 500, 600, max range, fire. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I have it set up the way I have it set up. So you want to do that too, because I want to max maximize. My, my weapon system, and that's what you want to do, okay? What else we got? All right. Somebody said um, a couple questions. That Okay. Uh, IR lights on your car, truck, or nods on helmet will do? I, that, I guess that's a question. I don't have IR on my truck. I don't know. Um, I, I do have night vision goggles. I mean, night vision. If you want night vision – Couple of guys, um, we have night vision. You want night vision, okay? So night vision, but this is a very expensive hobby, okay? Extremely expensive hobby, okay? <laughs> but it's good to have if you're trying to evade something. You can, you know, what I mean, but you got to pull in your vehicle. You got to pull the lights. Um, if you're in a situation where that's that's the type of day, if you have the time, uh, and you have to go just straight up nod something like that, you need to pull the uh the fuse on your on your brake lights. All right. So and then cut your lights out. And, and, and then from there, you can use your knots. You don't want to use thermals because obviously you won't be able to shoot to see through the shield, the windshield. But you can use knots. I have drove. I went to a school before when I uh, with a special operations school that I went to. And uh, we we did some night driving and uh, it was beautiful, man. I was doing like 80 miles an hour, bro, with knots. And, and basically <laughs> at some point it was we had to drive without the knots and only our partner. Had the knives and he was like, oh, turn right. I'm like, oh, how far? More, more. He's like, more, more, more. You hear the car. Well, it's scary, but that was hilarious, man. But uh, that was just a situation where it was a very fun, good training. Uh, but obviously, you can, you're not going to do that. But if you do, there's 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 things that you can do. I, at the cheapest, I think you can get in, it'll be uh, thermals. Thermals have calmed down quite a bit. But remember, you're not going to be able to drive with thermals on. All right, uh, because you can't see through the glass, hmm. so that'd be an issue. But, um, yeah, and yeah, hope I answered the question. All right, somebody asked, um, what is the best pistol to get for your wife? The one that she can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, start, start, um, don't make the mistake of just trying to put a 44 caliber. You know, in her hand, and she only weigh 135 pounds. You know what I mean? That's probably be a mistake. Yeah, we've seen that video. That did not work out for us. Then she ain't gonna, she gonna be this hard, and ain't gonna never want to shoot. Okay, I know a lot of people look down on 380s. Okay, I don't have an issue with 380. We're using 3 380 uh, uh, a federal gold gold dot uh, hollow point. That shit is lethal, boy. That shit's mm. real lethal, boy. 380 gold dot, boy. That's the that's the standard right there. Okay, that's the what what'll put you down. Um. Uh, but nine mil, uh, uh, using some, uh, was it a uh, um, critical duty? You know what I mean? Hornady critical, critical duty. These type of rounds like that. Um, and the reason why these rounds are the way they are because uh, they, they what they call blinds, shooting through blinds. And these blinds are when you're shooting through light exterior doors or interior doors or, or a certain type of walls uh, that you can shoot through and glass. 
that you don't want to deform the bullet to, to a point where it can't it can't uh, stay straight. So like when you fire, like when you're doing windshield firing and you fire, right? So like like I was training people how to shoot through the glass. So you would you know put your hand and shoot the glass block. You can actually shoot through the glass and the and the bullets are going to deviate a little bit. You know what I mean, but you gotta you just keep shooting. But if you having like a like a hollow point bullet and you hit the glass, it would disintegrate, and it's not gonna it's not gonna give you the effect you want because a lot of times they'll try to skip up. Sometimes mm -hmm. they can skip down, but they're very unpredictable. That's why a lot of times for many years I carry straight ball ammo because I like the penetrating effects that I would get from that. You know what I mean? I could straight shoot through blinds because sometimes hollow point ammunition has a tendency to get caught up in the material. And when they get caught up in the material, it won't expand. Mm. All right. Somebody asks, um, is Apex carry a good choice for concealed carry? If so, what holster do you recommend? Um, uh, I recommend if, if my I wish my brother Britt Brit could get back into making holsters again. I would recommend one of his because I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't seen any holsters better than the ones that Britt made. Mm. I, Britt, Britt makes some of the best holsters I've ever come across. I'm just uh, hands down. I, 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 hey, Britt, I don't get mad at me. I know you got a lot of stuff going on, <laughs> but I, I, bro, I'm just saying, dude, it is. It's just is 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 the bung diggity. It's, it's good shit. Um. But uh, I, right now I have an old leather holster from uh, Galco um, that I'm using for my 45. Um, it's something I have for years. Uh, but a lot of people use uh, Kydex Type Ones, and it's just so many. It's so, bro, there's so much out there. But really, what it comes down to is ask yourself this: is 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 concealability versus comfort? You know what I mean? Is it is it is it something that's totally concealed? Can you get to it? It's, it's, it's like, can you get to it? And then, at, furthermore, practice. <laughs> practice getting to it. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? If you're going to do a do the, 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 you know, uh, a carry up front or to the side or behind, can you get to it? Is it concealed? You know what I mean? That type of stuff. You know what I mean? You don't want to be, um, um, you know, uh, silhouetting your weapon too much. I'm, I'm, I'm open carrying right now. I want to care, bro. Straight up, man. I like, Depending on the range of the person, I, I'm I'm not I'm on any draw. I'm gonna probably must knife them to death, depending on how close they are, because it's quicker just for me to pull out my knife and just stab the shit out of you, rather than try to go ahead and pull up and shoot you. So that's something in consideration too. All right. Um, he says, uh, "Brother Gideon, sign me up for one of those holes." I, I don't make them. That's brick. Brit make them. Brit, I, I, like I said, Brit make the best holsters I've ever come across. I mean, I've seen a lot of different holsters out there, and um, I'm gonna be honest with you, the the, the min, 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 meticulous time that he takes to make it and craft it, it's 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 really artwork. Like it's like literally the dude need to sign each one of them with his name on it. <laughs> I'm serious, bro. Like I'm serious. I, I, I mean, I sound, I sound funny, but I'm real, bro. It is what it is. That's that's my recommendation. Go to go go to my brother. <laughs> and, and he's on Instagram. Yeah. But but you say he doesn't sell them anymore? Yeah, I think he um got a little caught up. This, they got a lot of projects going oh, on. I can't yeah, really yeah. speak for him. I'm not gonna speak for him, but I think he's just he's just been really busy. Okay. But I would highly recommend if he has the time to get one from him. Okay. And then I seen uh Yes, I have Safari Land. That works too. I saw that. And we we got a, a Shalom from Australia. So Shalom, straightway Australia. <laughs> Aussie. All I, right. I like Australians. New Zealand's are better. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> get mad. They're going to get mad. What is, this is the kind of battle they got going on. I, was to mess with. I, said, I ran across the, uh, uh, when I was in Iraq. I, I messed with some Aussies over there. Man, it was funny. Then they had the New Zealanders wearing us. Then you see the little Kiwi on it. I used to mess with them all the time between each other, starting shit. Anyways, yeah. Uh, I got another question. What's up, bro? So you were talking about you did a uh, car acquiring. Uh, what do you recommend with you know as far as wearing a seat? Have you ever practiced you know seatbelt on and? Yes, uh, I have. Uh, I've done it. Yeah. What's your question? Uh, is, so it is actually problematic because the seatbelt like. Yes, it could be problematic if you have any weapon like in a situation where it kind of like how you if you it it depends on how it's cut. You know what I mean? But if you if you're carrying it up front, you know what I mean, it'd be a lot easier to pull up. But at the same time, it's still an issue. Um, 
You need to become left-handed like me. No, no, <laughs> no. That's, that's I mean, problem. it's everything takes practice. You know what I mean? There's no, there's nothing that's gonna just one thing fits all. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm not, you know what I mean? But um, like I say, it's, it has a lot to do. A lot of times, I, 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 a lot of times, I take my gun out and I put it right on the console, man. There's, I know people have a little deals where they put the gun. You take it out when you get in the car. You can set it between that center console and they keep the gun. That's a, that's a, that's a good answer for that question. A lot of people do that. They've got the little magnet. There's a magnet. I had a magnet in, my, in a car I had before. I had a magnet, and I'll put the magnet there, and I would set my gun there. Hmm. Basically, it's like a desk. Like you got a, a desk, you drill it, put the magnet, you can set your gun there. And then there's one that you can put your uh, actual pistol in there. You can look into something like that. I know uh, one brother, he has one where uh, he can actually put his rifle. So he's got a, a 11.5 rifle, and he carries his rifle like that. Right, there, it's truck gun, pro se, and so there's little gadgets you can use. A lot of times, I'll just take my gun out and I'll put it right there, bro. I mean, hello, you know, yeah. All right, somebody asked, uh, how do you like Barnes Tech XPD 380? I don't even know what. Uh, oh, oh, the ammo, ammo, Barnes Tech. I've never fired it, uh, but I, I, I know what you're talking about. That's that cross tip ones. Um, they had a, uh, a lot of reviews on it and said it's pretty good. I mean, I know what you're talking about. It's the, I think it's it's like the, it's supposed to like drill through. Yeah, you know, they say it's good, but I I don't know like like how many bodies is laying on the ground with the bullets in it. <laughs> it say, I'm pretty sure it, it kills. You know what I mean? That's about all I can say about that one. I know it's good for blinds though. All right, somebody said, uh, Brother Gideon, what do you think about subcompact pistols like Springfield Hellcat and P365? The Hellcat. Yeah, I like that. I don't really care for the Hellcat. I'm glad. That's just, like I said, remember, when you ask me a question, you talk about something that's personal to me, okay? Hellcat's got a little bit a little bit too much bite for for a little thing like that. Just not enough weight in the ass, and it kicks a lot. And I... I like follow up shots. I like when I'm firing, like like you know what I'm saying. I, I like the weight sometimes of having something that have a good follow up shot, you know. Cause like I said, I'm firing a pistol caliber round. And when I'm I'm coming out, and especially if I'm in a hurry, if I draw quick and I'm 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 coming for that person, there's a possibility that I could miss. So I want to be able to have a good follow up shot so I can put another round on target quickly. And and it's a little snappy for me and, and I can't really get you know, saying that grouping that I want and then the follow up shot, especially. I mean, I don't know too many people who's just going to stand there and say, come on, kill me. A lot of people try to move. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I got a few of them that wasn't moving. But what I'm saying is that typically nobody's going to stand there and let you shoot their ass. So if you pull in, they're probably going to move. So if you, you know, firing and you miss and then all of a sudden you got to get that follow up shot while you're trying to track them. You know what I mean? You're trying to track that target because you ain't going to just sit there and try to do a hand bush technique. All right, let me run that way. I'm going to hit you. You're going to try to, you're going you're gonna to track with them. And then if you're missing, you know, eh, yeah, no. I, I'm going to tell you something I, I, I personally switched to is uh, for my, my uh, is a, a SIG, uh, SIG 320. A SIG 320 is a very good weapon. I, I, I use the um, M17, um, uh, M18. The M18. I use the M18 military version. Um, it's, it's got safety on it. Um, some people might decide not to do that, but it's very good. I mean, the trigger on it is phenomenal. And um, cold hammer forged barrel. I mean, it's 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 good. It's I love it. I loved it, and especially for you can change it out, make it modular to yourself. Glocks you can't really um, do a lot of uh, changes to. There's stuff out there for Glocks. And I, I know, but it's a lot cheaper. When it's with the SIG, I like the SIG, man, because I can change up the trigger, the the wheels, put a Wilson Combat on, put look, man, that thing, the, uh, just uh, off the box, I just dead center. It was just, it's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. So, and it's 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 not the same size as a Glock 19. You know what I mean? So yeah, I like those. Uh, somebody somebody asked, uh, what what Ranger Battalion were you with? I was never in actual Ranger Battalion. I worked with uh, 75th Ranger Regiment, the first first battalion itself. When I was uh, in 2007, I was in part of a, a um, 
a task force when I was with them and, and we worked together for, was it eight months for one tour? So I worked very closely with them, uh, entering buildings, store, everything with them. So, and I was with the uh, Lurch unit pretty much most of my career. So pretty much uh, my experiences working with first range battalion was uh, for that tour. That's about it. So, yeah. All right, somebody said. Okay, let's see. Goes. All right, that looks like about it for the questions I'll for move. now. Oh wait, uh, brother, Gideon. oh, uh, brother Brown. Oh, that's Zedekai. Oh, Zedekai. He, he said, uh, brother, Gideon, bless you for giving us this info. Hey, bless you too, brother. All right. So, um, let me see. I I, I had a question. Um, Let me see. Oh, somebody said Sig makes some uh, makes some nice system. They do. Sig Sig has definitely stepped the game up. I mean, before they had some issues when initially when they first came out with the the P two twenty six. The P two twenty six had some issues when it first came out, but they 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 eventually started fixing those things when the uh, when the Navy SEALs switched to them. Initially, the uh, Navy SEALs was like breaking slides on them, and then the, the, they stuck with them, and then it, SIG changed it up, and then they ended up coming with the H and K, and then they ended up switching to Glocks themselves. So now, I think I think the uh, SEALs are using. Uh, I think they might have switched to the SIG again, so they're back with the SIG 320s. Okay, uh, Pastor Pastor said, uh, "Tell them what the what a LERS unit is." Oh, long range uh, long range surveillance unit. So. Um, Basically, our job is to go behind enemy lines and we would surveil the enemy doing things like uh, uh, calling in um, artillery, fast movers, meaning airplanes, um, helicopters and stuff like that. We usually work between three to six man units. I think a lot of people are pretty much knows this is called special reconnaissance. So if you look up special reconnaissance and stuff like that, you start to see some of the things we will be able to do. A lot of our units, we're, we're capable of of jumping in either high altitude freaking uh, parachutes through scuba we do uh zodiacs mountain rucking uh riding on uh atvs and things like that um there's a lot of things come into that um it's basically just spying on the enemies and um basically uh like during the war during the war when uh third id was moving in they used our units to uh go forward of them, and then we pretty much called in when they, um, the Iraqi army was trying to flank them and stuff like that and called in uh, fast mover A-10s and F-16s and blowing up shit. Pretty much I just walk around, I just look, see something, don't like it, and then call somebody to come kill it. Hmm. So that's pretty much what we do. And we do other things too, like I did um, other, other tasks that we have to do is uh, search and rescue. I was I took part of an operation where I uh, had to rescue two uh, Apache pilots who uh, crashed that came from uh, Germany. Um, I was very proud of that, um, saving their lives. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. So it's pretty much it's uh, all all eleven victors. I mean, pretty much all Ranger qualified Rangers, every position. And as our our units go back to Vietnam, when you look at the LERPs, from Vietnam and how 75th Ranger Regiment was started, came from the LERPs and then just moved on. And there's only pretty much two left. And that was Echo Company 51st LERPs and Foxtrot 51st LERPs. And I was, I was a, a part of both of those units. I served with both of them and I went overseas to Kosovo with Foxtrot and I went uh, to uh, Iraq with um, uh, Echo Company. So I spent a lot of time working with them. Very good units. All right. So reconnaissance. Love it. Brother uh, Zedekiah said, Gideon, let everyone know that the M M P 45 is a great weapon of choice. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, y'all uh, definitely hit that like button, share. You know what I'm saying? Pass it down. Say y'all need to make sure y'all Rewatch it, watch it over. Know what Get I care? Edgy. See what I care right there? Is that a car? You see that right there? That's what I got, baby. <laughs> 45, 19, 11. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that one. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all. 
So I hope y'all got all your questions answered. Um, definitely be. I'll be looking in the comments to see what y'all thought of this. We're probably we're probably gonna do it again. I, I think a lot of stuff was pretty advanced information for. Uh, I speak English. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'll be going, man. I, you know, I, bro, I just start hitting out them acronyms, bro. I'm, I'm going to mess them up. I'm going to mess them up uh, uh, first day with it. I'm going to throw all kinds of acronyms. I'm like, what's an SSE kit? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sensitive site exploitation. That's what that is. Okay. And I'll teach you about that. So some of the missions that um, I got planned for you guys. You know, you, you yeah. So, so what we're gonna one of one of the things we're gonna be doing down here, at Straightway, Florida. We actually um, they have an airsoft arena. Airsoft. We actually got one of them uh, airsoft weapon up there. It looks uh, looks and operates just like a a real AR-15, but it's plastic uh, pellets it shoots out. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be doing. We rented out the airsoft arena here in Jacksonville for Monday. And we're gonna be doing force on force training out there and all types of other stuff. So we we gonna try to get our skills up now. And it's yeah. not about and and this I want to clarify that mm -hmm. this is not about going out there to have fun because uh, I'm not I'm not about in the business of sitting here going to Parkland and trying to have fun with people. This is about training. This is a serious thing, and most of the people not even money not be able to train with us because I'm just look at their their spirits right off the bat and then see okay, well, I'm discerning your spirit. You know what I mean? No, you you don't you don't need to be here because you're not serious. You know what I mean? And I know I'm gonna tell you a lot of things you don't know about a person, especially when it comes to this, is the way they keep their weapon or what type of weapon they have. The upkeep a weapon. I probably much can a lot of times I can look at people and I ask people to break out their weapon and it'd be dusty, rusty. And I was like, you know what? You don't even give a shit about your life, so I don't even care about me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously, man. It's like some people's weapons are so damn rusty that shit won't even function. Mm. Yeah, you know I me mean? coming out the range. I'm sitting there spending most of my time sitting there oiling up your shit, scrubbing your shit, doing you know, PCIs and PCCs on your weapon, and, and, and it ain't even mine, just so that you can train. And then your dumb ass don't come out with ammo. So I got to give you ammo too. Not only I'm giving you training, clean your weapon, service your weapon, give you ammo. You know what I mean? Then I got to get you water and and, and and air protection and eye protection. I'm like, yeah, dang, what 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 are you, Master Charlie? You know what I'm saying? You it's like, why are you even here? Why are you even? Here? That's the why. Why are your ass here? Get the hell out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that type of stuff, and it, it happens all the time. I'm pretty sure Pastor come across it, but people got to deal with this shit, man. But you. But right, overall, man, like especially with the people you're around, discerning spirits, man, understand what they're about, man. You know what I mean? You have to know those who work amongst you. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a, that's a clear thing. I mean, a leader, a good leader always knows that. You know what I mean? You have to be able to disseminate information. You know what I mean? And let them people be able to regurgitate that information back to you so that there's a, a you got that reciprocity between the two of you. So, so like, the, the I'm, I, and there's a signal. You know what I mean? I send it out and it is received. And then it was regurgitated to me, understanding that they, they understand. So there's the, the clarity of it. You know what I mean? Right. I want to make sure that that person understood. Some people just stupid y'all it happens but <laughs> hey it, 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 right it is true some people just stupid some people you got to repeat stuff too many many times we all but we all fall as past i mean what elder always said we all shit the bed sometimes or shit our pants you know what i mean it happens and then mistakes are going to be made but learn from those mistakes you know what i mean and 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 when you got experienced people like my brother um beloved uh brother andre out there frog man as y'all know him you know, glean from him, you know, go to him and ask him questions. You know, and he might give you the look like, why are you asking me this dumb ass question? But in his heart, he knows that you you probably mean well. But then, then sometimes you're going to ask some dumb ass shit. That's all you're going to answer, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, what's what's wrong with y'all trying to do your due diligence and getting your research? You know what I mean? And then trying to trying to uh, to show, show Pastor Dow, show me, show other guys who are like this, that you at least tried. You know what I mean? To to learn this information, you know what I mean? And you're not just going with every sway, wind, everything that goes out there because there's so much. You know what I mean? I got to teach these guys the OODA loop. I got to teach these guys so many different things, you know what I mean, to get them ready. But I cannot teach you everything that I have learned in my 21 years in the military in one afternoon. I can't do that. So I just got to teach you maybe two or three things that's going to stick with you. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Right. So also we, in the husbands, when you when you're training, you're training your wives. You know what I mean? That's the same. We say in the military, you can't teach your own wife. Get somebody else to do it. And it, when it, when it comes to uh, uh, training uh, with the weapons, because a lot of times women didn't listen, but that was in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but sometimes it can be it can be hard to train. You know what I mean? And and now, uh, but take your time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start small. Start small. Start to do little drills. You know, cap drills. You know, things like that. Uh, don't put, like I said, don't put the 44 Magnum in their hand. And, you know, and, and then at the same time, when you like a lot of guys do this, this is another thing guys do. A lot of guys be like, hey, baby, hey, you, you want to get a rifle? Hey, we're going we gonna to get this one right here. Baby. I'm going to hook you up. Yeah, baby, you're going to love this. Well, look at it. Look at that right there, boy. You got the lace on it. And it, and it, it, what it, it, it like, like literally, you imagine, y'all imagine uh, 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 Sister Bridger walking around with this damn thing. The thing went 14 pounds, man. What's your little ass going to do with this? You're going to drop it. That's what she's going to do. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't do that to your wives, man. Like, take. Like understand, you know what I mean. Start them off with something they can. Uh, we we started off with something, and then we all we went all the way down to the Roni. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, well you can't handle it. She was like, oh, it's complaining about. Okay, so I worked with her, man, and to the point where I got a Roni. You know what I mean? Now she can tear that thing apart. She can shoot it. You know what I mean? And and and, and like I said, Pastor said all the time, she's on my team. You know what I mean? So I want her to be able to give effective fires to my left and right flank. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I need to I need her to be able to do that and you need that because they on your team so you want to don't give you don't don't make your wild saw gunners okay <laughs> so <laughs> you, press and fire. Press and fire. don't do it don't do it to them but you know what i mean but just take your time same, same with your children that's another thing teach your children safety you know what i mean it's, it's it, and, and that's another thing we have to learn is locking our weapons up and knowing where they are you know what i mean so that's we got small children around you know but the best thing to do is teach them safety you know, teach them safety, teach them about the weapon system, what not to do with it, and this and a third. And you got small children, small children, small children. Keep your weapons high, lock them up, do what you got to do. Be safe about it, y'all. You know what I mean? Just please. You know, we don't, we don't, and be smart. Don't do, please, because I'm going to tell you right now, if you come, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure back, Pastor will back me on this. If you come, if you come to the ministry with your shit out of, out of whack and dirty, I'm kicking your ass out, and I'm going to tell pastor, and he probably kick your ass right the hell off the land because it's some bullshit. We cannot have y'all sorry asses coming to the land all out of whack, coming in with your little your little stubby rifle that's, that's, that's completely illegal. <laughs> you dirty. You don't have, you, you know what I'm saying? You a felon, and you don't supposed to have a weapon. Mm. You ask me, how many people done, done that to me, man? Come on, brothers, man. Y'all not y'all y'all don't show me love, mm. man. Y'all don't show me love. I'm showing you love. Pastor's showing you love by one inviting you. The, the most high showing you love by bringing you into the feast in the first place. Right. And then after all that, what do you do? You come rolling dirty and you bring some bullshit and then you ask, me, hey brother, you saying we from New York? You know, saying we can't really blah, 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 blah. and then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, bro, come on. Then I'll ask you this question, hey man, you supposed to have well, well, no, actually, you know, saying uh. I, I I robbed a couple of folk back in the day, so I ain't supposed. But why are you even, why are you even back here, bro? Why you why are you doing us like that, man? Don't do that, man. You don't show no love for your brother, man. And then put you putting everybody's shit in danger with that stupid shit, and you bring our evil spirit to the land. You know, get yourself right, man. Like you going you going to the feast, man. It's not about sitting here, you know, hanging out with your buddies, man. It's about praising y'all. This is y'all's feast, man. Do it, do it the right way, y'all. Don't don't come with that bullshit. You know what I mean? Pray up, do your fast, do what you got to do. Do your studies, your due diligence, what you have to do prior to even going there. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to see your punk ass at the range. I don't want to, Andre don't want to deal with you. I don't want to deal with you with that bullshit, with that bullshit spirit. Get your spirits right. Get your minds right before mm. y'all even walk out there with that. Okay? That's that's number one. Because we don't want to deal with it. And the same with y'all asses here. If I if I suspect some bullshit, which I'm telling you straight up, I'm gonna look you right in the eye and say, that dude need to get the hell up out of here. Because I'm not dealing with you. Because if you don't show me. That you even got the due diligence to even try to the intestinal fortitude to try to get it right in your own spiritual life or do what you got to do when it comes to this. Why would I want you next to me? You, I got, I got children. You know, I don't want you near me. I'm tired of that. Don't do your brothers like that. Don't put his life in danger. Respect this man. He's your leader. You know what I mean? Listen, obey. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Right. Yeah. Are you gonna make mistakes? Absolutely. We all do. We all shit the bed. You know what I mean? It happens. Learn from your mistakes and keep it moving. You know what I mean? That's all. Yeah. It's about love, baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. And a little foot in the ass every now and then. 
<laughs> yeah. Straight up. Uh, one last question. Uh, Brother Van said, uh, Brother Gideon, any info on bulletproof vests and tactical vests? Okay, that goes back. Do you need that, bro? What you going to do with that? I mean, like, seriously, right? I mean, you're going to sleep with it? Or you going you gonna to tactically invade a home? I mean, I, do you need that in your life? If you do, okay, let's say, because maybe everybody needs one. Maybe you don't. But you got to really, truly ask yourself that question. Do you need one? What else do you got with that system? You know what I mean? So if you were, I, I know, uh, was it a uh, safe light or a safe something? So not safe light. Is it safe light? Safe light got some pretty uh, decent ones because they come out with these new armors. You know what I mean? They're pretty good. You know what I mean? But at the same time, when you do get something like that, you got to train with it. Train with it, yo. Like literally, you know, like I, I tell people all the time, we should do this all the time. And just you, you put the equipment on you and go out there and sweat a little bit. Train with it. Crawl with it. Does it fit? Does it work? Does it work for you? You know what I mean? Just because somebody else has it and they, and they, and they make it a YouTube video and say it's going to stop a 556 five, bullet. Do you really need that shit, though? <laughs> Are you going to have time to put it on? You know what I'm saying? Yep. <clears throat> let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. I'm, I'm about to hurt some feelings. Let's do it. <laughs> Not all of y'all out there are warriors. Some of y'all are berry pickers. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest, and I see it all the time. And I've seen people in positions who are supposed to be warriors and end up being berry pickers. But you better know the difference. You know what I mean? I can't make you hard. You had to have been built like that. You know what I mean? I can train you with some shit, but at the same time, your ass can break, and you never know, because I've seen grown-ass men break in combat. I've seen it. Okay? And he's supposed to be warriors. Mm. You know what I mean? Seen guys straight up on uh, first range try to get sent home because they broke. They broke straight up. What the hell happened there? It happens. Sometimes you get battle fatigue. Some it, everybody's got a a, a a a breaking point. You never know what it is. You know what I mean? You know, so just can't say, well, you know, just because you carry around a, a weapon, you, you a warrior. You know what I mean? Sir, I'm just mean. I'm just from my experience. I can't call everybody a warrior. I just I can't because some of y'all just wusses. Straight up, how many of y'all been in fist fights? You'd, you'd, be you'd, be, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how many people who ain't never been in a fist fight. I thought everybody Shit. got their ass beat up at least once. Got punched in the them, mouth at least once. A lot of them have seen asshole and elbows. <laughs> That's their fist fight. You know what I mean? So it, it happens. I ain't saying, I'm just saying, the reality is, and not all of y'all built for this shit. You know what I mean? Some people are, some people ain't. But that doesn't stop you from being able to be able to train to defend yourself. You should be able to defend yourself, okay? I don't give a damn whether you're a woman, a man, or a child, whatever. You should be able to defend yourself, but not everybody's going to run the fire. Some people, like myself, I'm my silly ass. I know Pastor Crazy ass. He, he going to run the fire. Well, Pastor, you ain't going to run the fire. We're going to stop you. We're going to stop you right now. I'm telling you, he be talking about that shit. He be like, oh, bro, I ain't going to let you. Serious? You ain't Get over here. Let me get up front. You know what I mean? <laughs> he he gonna want to, but he the pastor. You know what I mean? Right. Nah, we can't have that. You know what I mean? Uh, some of us want to run the combat. I've been trained to run towards the fire. That's what I do. You know what I mean? That's not a situation what you need to do. You need to defend your family and flee. Mm. And that and that and that that's the whole purpose of of what we're talking about. I was talking to some of the brothers here about that too, where. You know, there's brothers, man, I'd been on him about getting in shape and being, you know, the the whole, the underlying reason why we're training. You know, Ron Dalton went and put out a stupid ass comment. Oh, they're training to attack America or some That's shit. Bullshit. No. That's not what I'm doing. We training so we don't have to be uh, reliant on these wicked heathenistic cops and their system to protect us. If we're gonna function as a nation, we're gonna protecting yourself. That's part of it. Oh, uh, the other part is it's it, we are ordered to by Yah. There you go. Okay, that's number one. Okay, let's let's yep. let's be in accordance with the let's let's start with the book first. Right. Let's be in accordance with that. You are supposed to be able to defend yourself with some kind of arm. They say you know sell your cloak and get a get a get a sword. Okay, come on, let's book. let's understand this. The, the the Israelites fought and built on the wall. Okay, Peter had one. Okay, let's let's stop playing here. Let's get to the chase. 
right? And then also here in America, the Second Amendment right, that's a right that's been given to us through this country, but yeah. it is actually a right that you have from the most high Yah to be able to protect and defend your own and your family. The hell with these laws of this country. I'm not here trying to fight America. I'm trying to defend my shit because there are so many evil, wicked ass doing people out there that want to take your shit, man. And you ain't going to be able to do it with your damn Glock 19, bro. What you going to do with this when you got people who are trained to, to, to be able to do all this shit, breaching and all this other bullshit, and you got this bullshit, but you never go to the range or hardly go to the range with. You going you gonna, to you gonna do what? Go to Africa or some bullshit with a machete, dude? Seriously? Yeah, that, Seriously, that bro? Seriously, you bring weapons. You gotta, I've been to Africa. You ain't telling totally me something fierce. I don't know. I done seen the atrocities over there, too. All right, you gotta be able to train yourself. You gotta be able to defend yourself because there are so many people out there. There's militia groups all over America, bro. They just they 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 wanna get your shit. They wanna take your shit. How you gonna defend yourself? How you gonna defend your family with that bullshit? You need to be amongst your people. You know what I'm saying? And no people need to train. Well armed, well trained. That's what Abraham did, right? I believe so. So why we, why we, that, that's that's what we're supposed to do. Defend your shit. I'm not trying to fight America. I can't beat, bruh, that shit ain't going to beat no tank. You're a drone. <laughs> bruh, I didn't work with them. Seriously. Do you know how many people we didn't destroy without even freaking pulling the trigger? I just, go, I just sneak up on them. Sneak up on them, bruh. Seriously. And then call for fire. Boom. Mm. Done. Straight up. Too easy. I'm looking at some, uh, an objective. I'm not running in that shit. <laughs> I call it patches. The patches can put a damn uh, 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 hellfire missile right into the, in, the, um, the, into the damn window. And then we go in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That one. Or I have such a follow-on force. Okay? That I got a follow-on force. That's freaking like, freaking like 100 dudes, man. We come off those Blackhawks and come off those uh those, those those helicopters and then we go straight in. I got follow-on forces. We got we got um uh what's some things uh the, the the damn tanks and stuff with us or whatever. I'm trying to think of the name right now, kid. From strikers, striker vehicles. The striker vehicles coming off that ramp, come down, you gun with the striker vehicle, go right into the building, bam. You know what I mean? They got 50 cowboys up there and all kinds of shit. We can get resupply. You don't have that shit. You got you, your wife, and your children. Now what? Where's where's the people gonna come and help? I got a brother. I got brothers. Phone call. They come to come to my aid. I'm around them, living with them, amongst them. When some shit go down, we all going through it. You ain't just coming for one person. You coming for us all, and I mean all of us. That's why we have the guns, so we can defend our shit because it's gonna happen. And and what? Well, a lot of these uh, so-called Hebrews out here got they got nine one one and Officer Murtaugh who gonna come murk your ass. Cause it, that's what they do. You call them and they shoot you. Right, right, right. You know, I mean, literally. I mean, hey, listen, man. I I I rather what they, what they're saying is I rather be judged by twelve but than carried by six. You know, I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not gonna take. The chance with my my precious cargo, you know what I mean? My wives, my my daughter, my brothers, you know what I'm saying? I'm no. So I'm while I while you sitting on the phone calling nine one one, I'm putting nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> nine one one. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm putting them in it. You know, what I mean? but I'm training to do it. The the, the key message is y'all, please train. You got to train. You got to train to understand why your weapon is doing what it's doing and understand why you have this shit on your weapon. Is it effective for you? Because that setup right there is not for you. You don't have night vision goggles. You don't need all that shit. Yes, it looks cool, but you don't need all that shit. Do you even um, do you even understand what the what the uh, ballistics is of when after you didn't fire 200 rounds, how much your weapon drops? What's the what's how, what is it doing at that point? You have to understand all these things. And the only way you can do the answer to why is get your ass out there and train. Now, I done got my weapon dirty. I know exactly how it's going to act when it's dirty. I know exactly what my weapon is going to do after I done fired 200 rounds on rapid fire. I see what it's going to do. I understand that it's going to go from uh, a half a minute MOA to a 1.5 and how that's going to affect 
at two, 300 yards so I can hit that target at that distance. You don't know that. I know exactly how to clear my house. I know exactly what the candle linen or, or uh, my lumens on my, uh, on my um, uh, flashlight is going to do and how it's going to work in certain situations within my home. How this bullets or terminal effects is going to happen on that person's body if I hit them. You know what I'm saying? Or miss. I need to know this information. And that's why I'm here. And that's what you have to do. You have to answer the why. But you're not going to do it by sitting on YouTube. You're going to do it by getting your ass out there and train. Yeah. You got to train. You got to get out there and do these things and understand that this thing and do it under pressure. And 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 one of the things to take taking taking uh, account to think about, like I think Pastor was talking about, and I I saw a video on it. Um, I, I I'm not sure which one said it, but anyway, what they were saying is like with Ukraine, they were saying how a lot of those people never thought that their country would get invaded and they'd be in a situation there and there, you know, I mean, uh, it was, um, this guy was saying how, Oh, it's a European country. This stuff doesn't happen here. This happens in Africa or in the middle East, but it's right there on their porch. Something crazy could happen here. And then you're, you're immediately cast into a situation where you have to protect and defend. It happened in black, I mean, black wall street. Yeah. It's a real it's a re the uh, so society and civilization is like one blackout away from just being completely gone. Mm -hmm. uh, if the electrical power goes out, you're you're in a survival situation That's where right. you got to protect, defend for yourself. You're on your own. That's true. That's and and you and, and y'all seen in some of these calamities mm -hmm. that's happened. I think that thing that happened in Texas with you the cold see. weather, mm -hmm. cops are like <laughs> you on your own. Like we ain't helping your ass. You know. Yep. They quick to throw, man. It's it's a thin veil of security going on around here. That's it, man. And it's getting thin. That's it. That's it. Especially uh, that's something I I, I learned and uh, messing with the Marines. You know what I mean? When I went to the schools. So I mean, like like a door. You know what I mean? When we do breaches on a door, I learned uh, like you think that security is not. It doesn't. I can just kick it in, man. It's nothing. It's just a little piece of wood, a little sliver of piece of wood. What's between that and your family? That. And, and every one of my wives know how to use that. And when my little daughter get old enough, she going to know how to use it too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to train her. I'm going to teach her everything I know about that. You know what I'm saying? So that she can defend her husband's home when if, if he's away. And then also be an asset to him to watch his flanks. That's what I'm going to teach my baby. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you got to understand that, that like I said, like, like he just said, when somebody's, when, when somebody's belly is touching their spine, bro, they willing to do anything, bro. And, and ask me, how, ask me how I know. Come on, ask me. How you know? Bro, I'll tell you how I know. Good question. Sam, because when I was in Iraq, I seen the starvation of the Iraqi people, citizens, when we were coming in. And believe me, it was very dead. I seen boy, it was it was one of the most saddest sight I was seeing, bro. Just watching them, that was like, damn, these people were so hungry. They would do anything, bro. They would do anything. Mm. Like that to the point. And remember, even in the book, what did our people do? They ate each other. Mm. Didn't they? Mm -hmm. Am I am I fibbing? So so now what? When you got people out there who didn't prepare. Because they haven't been obedient to the most high y'all. They haven't done what they need to do. And now all of a sudden, while you preparing, they want to come get your shit. How you going to defend it? With your little 16 shots and nobody else around you. And they coming in droves. Wolves. Packs coming together. Not the long wolf. Wolf packs. Five, six of them carrying these. And you got your little... <laughs> Good luck with that shit. You know if, I mean? if if that, you know, because a lot of people out there who talk junk and be like, oh, be saying that they ain't got nothing. And they they talk and they're doing all these videos, but the reality is they ain't doing nothing in the book. Not not sad. even remotely close. That shit is sad. And I just I just I, I, I really pity them. I really pity them because you you really like I said, like I said, I don't, I don't, I, like I can talk shit about the government, or whatever. But at the same time, I'm glad I'm in America. I've been defending this damn country. 
Okay. While you sit there talking about what you would do, I already did it. That's number one. Like this ministry is about action. We ain't about sitting here talking and all that bullshit. It's about getting shit done. And that's how you got to understand. That's the number one sign of a warrior. And you can see that in Pastor Dow, Elder Rufus and Elder Mitchell and Pastor Corey. And, and the list just goes on and on and on. Them are damn warriors. You know what I mean? They're getting after it because they're not sitting around waiting. You know what I mean? They're getting after it. You know what I mean? Yep. They're motivated to do it for the love of their people, for the love of Christ, for the love of the Most High Yah. They getting after them because they show more love to the people than hell, even mind them themselves. You know, I know they love themselves. You know, what I mean? but what I'm saying as they love you so much, they want to help you, want to protect you, want to do these things. You know what I mean? They providing sources to be able to get you trained, get you fed spiritually and physically, and yet you sitting here not doing nothing. You know what I mean? Mm. You have to, like, I don't, it's like, damn, bro, you got free chicken. They said there's no free chicken. There's, there's free chicken. There's free chicken right here. You, you got to get up and get it. You got to get up and get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I, look, I, I was reading uh, the, 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 um, like, a couple chapters on some things, and I was just thinking, I'm like, dang, man, this is this is just so interesting. You're like, oh, is it uh, uh, Proverbs 27? Proverbs 27, you know, y'all is my light, y'all is my salvation, you know what I mean? And then I looked at in the, some of the translations of the old one, it says y'all is my stronghold rather than my strength. So when I looked at it, it says my strength in one version, and it says a stronghold of mother in another, hmm. or citadel. And I think about that, you know what I mean? And I think about how that affects me. So the strength, and I said, well, I'm not my own strength. Y'all, how do I find that? Because I go to the stronghold. That's a that's a physical act. That's something that I'm doing. I'm going to the most high Yah. And when I go to the most high Yah, I'm going to that citadel where he protects me. He lets me in. So when the enemies attack, they're not attacking me. They're attacking Yah because I'm within his confines. I'm within his 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 citadel. He's protecting me. I'm with him because I'm with, I'm within accordance to the law. I'm in a righteous standings. You have to understand that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, part of that is obedience. And he tells you, be able to get one of these, defend yourself. And there's a lot of other things you have to do. So I'm not worried about that you know, right. because I'm living it. Right. And and being around, my, I've never had so much in my life. I'm rich. I'm so rich. I'm rich on, on family, friends, just everything. Just, ah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. Real talk. Yeah, man. You gotta get after it, y'all. I mean, this this anybody else got a question? I'm trying to answer the food. How long we got? What's this gonna be able to do? We we good, man. Okay. We gonna we gonna wrap this up. <laughs> We're getting after it there for a sec. But uh appreciate all y'all tuning in. Appreciate all the questions. Definitely like, share, uh, subscribe, get the word out. And uh with that said, y'all, shalom, shalom. Blessings.